This is the Voice for Real Estate. It's a presentation of CWTAR, the Central West Tennessee Association of Realtors. And Brent Ward is our host weekly. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Jimmy. How are you this Man, morning? We ought to be doing this show from the parking lot. You know, it is, <laughs> it so is a beautiful day nice out there. Up there. We yep. might need a little shade, though. It's, well, it's, it gets yeah. a little toasty in the sun. That's true. That's true. But some of us have enough cover up there natural cover <laughs> yeah some of us don't thank just, you for pointing that out jimmy i just, appreciate that just just saying you know <laughs> oh lordy no 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 yeah that's okay no no fence hey, taking you know we have to laugh at ourselves because somebody's going to somebody's going to anyways i know and i go back and watch these on uh, facebook and i'm like let's let's just turn that off let's yeah. we'll turn that off yeah right because yeah. i have a tendency to move too much i've been told my hands my legs shake and everything else so i'm just bouncing around <laughs> up here on the stage so i'm trying to do better about not moving. Yeah, I saw, I saw myself on BBJ News Saturday night. I, I emceed the uh, all-class reunion at Jackson High School. Oh, yeah. Okay. And for the eighth year, I think, something like that. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, I don't like watching myself. I don't either. I don't like. I don't even like listening to myself, to be honest with you. But. I, I don't mind listening. And so the, what I do is I turn it on and then put it on my second monitor and really small <laughs> so that I can hear it. But yeah. then I don't really have, have to, to look see, at it. That's right. See me. That's yeah, right. That's I don't right. have to see me. So yeah, did you have a good weekend this weekend? I did, man. We, we reunioned all weekend. It was my wife's uh, 50th uh, okay. graduation. Uh, class 69 at Jackson High School. Jackson High School, there were 41 classes that graduated from that building where Madison Academic is now. That yeah, was right. Jackson High School. That's right. Yep. And uh, and next year is the last graduating class in that series. 1970 was the last one to be called Jackson High School. Then the okay. consolidation, Jackson Central Mary became the school. That's name. right. Yep. So uh, the next year will be the last one. Whether We're hoping that the, uh, that the all class will continue to go. Uh, and as long as that building's there, they, hopefully they'll let us use it. But, uh, you know, they do this, this private partnership deal with the city and county and the school board and build a new one over on Lambeth campus. That old, that old lady may get torn down. And she might. That's right. Yeah. My parents graduated when it was Jackson high school too, yep. from, from that same building. Yep. Absolutely. And they used to go to those whenever they would have those. But uh, my dad can't get out and get around like he yeah. used to, so they don't go yeah, anymore. There's, there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, he wouldn't uh, be the only one. <laughs> a lot of a lot of grayer hair there than when we were there originally. I'm sure there was, yeah, no so. doubt about it. Somebody somebody asked during the program we were talking about the library, and fortunately, Miss Worthy, Miss Edith Worthy, who was one of the one of everybody's favorite teachers at Jackson High School, was sitting on the on the front row, and and the, my co MC asked me, so where is the library? And I said, "You're asking me <laughs> where the library is." I said, "Check my check my trans transcript. You'll find I did not use it very often." Did not often. use the library. <laughs> yeah, of course, it was right above our heads, almost upstairs and on the back of it. But uh, I have never set foot in that building. Yeah, it's it's ever. a neat old building. You know, the architecture on the outside is cool, and the inside is just just as much. One of these days, I'd like to go over there and just walk through it to see what it looks like, before, yeah. in case they do happen to yeah. do something with it. But because uh, I like that kind of stuff. Several years ago, we we got. And a long years ago, like when I was new into the business and we uh, partnered up with the school system at that time and they got a, a big bus and a lot of us Jackson realtors got on it and we toured, they toured a lot of schools. Right. Uh, I couldn't go that day, but uh, that was kind of neat when they did that. Oh, so yeah. it'd be nice to be able to kind of set something up like that again to try to reintroduce the public school system to a lot of the realtors that, you know, yeah. don't have kids in the school anymore and, and, you know, being able to see what's new and what's yeah. different. And uh, and on a side note to that, happy to see about Mr. Washington taking over. I've yes. known him. His yes. son graduated yes. uh, high school with my son. Yep. And so I've known him for a little while. Not great, but I do know who he is, and he's a really nice yeah. guy. So either either of the choices would have been yes. would have been fine with me. They're both mm -hmm. both great uh, educators and both good administrators. Yes, but, they are. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't know Ray well, but I've I've met him a time or two when he was in the banking business. Yes, yep. And mm -hmm. uh, and I think I think it's a great move. I think he'll I think he'll keep us on a steady course. Now if we can just get some other folks to follow suit. There you go. That's that's the key, and that's yep. been everybody's concern. I know don't get off on that that rabbit hole talking about school systems, but I just I, I'm happy for him, and uh, he's he's a well respected guy, and I yep. like him a lot. So well, they they have they have a good man in that position. He's replacing a good man also. He is. And, uh, we're going to hate to see, see that. And I happen, just got to know him yeah. <laughs> as he was getting ready to leave because yep. I would see him at soccer matches, which is what I spent all weekend doing. Uh, yep. We had we had the, uh, I can't remember the first name, but Grimes Friendship Cup was held here in Jackson, which is a statewide yeah. uh, recreational soccer tournament. Cool. And uh, so this was the first year that our that we've had a team in there. My son played on the team, and it was uh, it was fun. We were out there. We had four games, played two on Saturday and two right. on Sunday. 
And uh, one thing we discovered really quick is uh, recreational teams versus travel teams, not a good matchup. No, and, no. And my no, son's no, no, on a no. recreational team, and so, like, the score of the first game was 10-1. to 1. My son scored our only goal. <laughs> uh, the second – and I'll put that little one out oh, there. Oh, yes, absolutely. And then our second game, it was – eight to zero our third game was like nine to zero and then in the last game we got up against another recreational team from lexington that one was evenly matched and we won that one three to one and my son scored another one in that one as yeah, well too travel so. teams are a little more serious about it they are a lot and more that's serious the cream of the crop in most cases it yeah. is yeah. it is and they were really good actually i watched the uh, jackson uh travel team uh, play. They played in a game right before our last one, and I, I got to watch them. I know some of the parents on, that have kids on that team. And they were actually playing up a level, so these were 10 and under playing in the 12 and under level. Wow. And uh, and I think they won that game, so if that's the case, I think they won two out of three out of their games, and they were playing up. <laughs> we need to remind everyone that this is not only on here on TJS, WTJS, but it's also on the uh, CWTAR Facebook page on that Facebook correct. Live, so you can see this now, or you can go back and uh, see it out of the archives. That would not be happening were it not for Mr. Paul Schulze. He's the man behind the curtain over there. We usually get a hand. There There's the hand. <laughs> there it is. Other Thanks, Paul. Other one's busy keeping us on the air. So That's right. Paul Schulze with Worthy Road Studios, and uh, he is out and about with uh, with uh, with the video cameras and the audios, and he does he does sports and special events and a little bit of everything. So if you need something. Uh, in that realm, video, audio, call the Paul Paul at uh, Worthy call Road on. Studios. He can give you the whole rundown, and I guarantee you, if you hire him, he'll do it perfectly for you. That's right. He does Always a great does job for us. That yes. should be his catch line. Call Paul. Call Paul. There's a TV right. series called Call Saul. Call, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. When you said it, it made yep. me think about it. Yep. Yep. Well, what's going on in real estate? Is well, some, is summer a summer a busy time, or does summer now, that, now is, the kids are out? Summer's a little busy time. A lot yep. of people have already taken their summer vacations, and now they're back home, and they're thinking about getting their house sold. And, you know, this is something I was going to talk about last uh, two weeks ago, but we kind of got uh, kind of got sidetracked on that, and we never got around to it. Right. So it worked out perfect for today. Good deal. And uh, so what we're going to talk about today is really getting your home ready for the market for the summer, which is by far the busiest time of the year for real estate is during the summer months. It picks, starts in the spring, but once the kids get out of school, yep. it's just Katie free for all then. Yep. That's right. So a couple of things we want to talk about. So, you know, I've been doing this for a long time as an agent. So I thought, you know what, I can get in here and talk about this. But I thought I better get some some talking <laughs> points just to be on the safe just side. To be safe. And so I went online and I pulled up some talking points and you can pull these up at Realtor.com. But uh, the w number one on the list, which I thought was the greatest one, which was find a great real estate agent or a realtor yep. to help you with the sale of your property. And that would be the best thing to do because they can go through. Look at your property, tell you the things that they see when they come through your property that might need to be done, uh, areas you might need to hit, uh, you know, maybe your paint colors are a little out of whack or something like that. But, you know, the, the main thing there is contact a realtor, have them come out to your house. It does not cost you anything to have them come out and take a look and uh, talk to them. And uh, hopefully you will find them to be the person that you need and you'll go ahead and hire them to help you sell your house. So Absolutely. that's number one on your list right number there. One on your, number on one your on your program. list. Number hire one hire a good realtor to come out and help you with that. So number two is think about curb appeal. Uh, you always hear that thing about you only have one time to make a good impression, right? right. One First time. time. First yep. time to make good impression. And the same holds true for your house. So if you're thinking about marketing your house, you want to make sure that you got the grass cut, you want the bushes trimmed, you want to make sure the bushes are trimmed away from the house. If you've got any overhanging limbs or anything really blocking the view from the street of your property, yep. you want to get all that type of stuff taken care of. You know, plant a few flowers, put something out there that adds some color, get some yep. pots out on the front porch if you have it. Um, and, you know, that's funny because that's one place that we don't spend a lot of time as homeowners is our is the front of our house. That's true. Right? Yeah. You yeah. know, normally we're in and out of the garage because that's where you come and go. Yep. Or we're in and out the back door mostly for yep. whatever reason, going out to play or letting the dog out. Or if you've got a swimming pool, you're back yeah. there. So the front porch is just one of those places you never go. And I'll tell you, one of the biggest things that will detract a, home, uh, a potential home buyer is wasp nest. Oh, yeah. 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 And I have been to houses in the past. I have been stung out showing houses on more than yep. one occasion oh, yeah. and uh, it's not fun but i keep right on plugging away and in pain uh, <laughs> especially when they go down your shirt collar and sting you right smack dab in the back of the neck Ow, that hurts. and uh but yeah wasp on the front porch is not good i remember going to show a foreclosed house once and granted it's foreclosure so uh, you never know what's going on and 
it was like a swarm. There were so many wasps out there. So that is one thing you want to make sure you get taken care of is the wasp, cobwebs, get the front door cleaned if it's dirty, clean out the light fixtures. Somebody, people never think about the light yeah. fixtures on the front of their house, but they get cobwebs, dirt daubers. Birds have a tendency to do a number on them. Yes, they do. Clear out the, the bird's nest as well. So you really want to get that front porch looking good. Because here's the other part of that. Not only do we not spend a lot of time on the front porch and our front door, but that's the longest place where your potential buyers are going to stand. They're waiting on the realtor to open the door for them to go in, so they're standing in one spot. Yeah, you're right. See, I told you I could do this off the top of my head. Yeah, you did it. You did it. (laughs) That is the one place they're going to spend the most of their time will be standing on the front porch. So you need to make sure that front porch is clean and that it looks great. That's, that's, right. that's a good tip. I never thought about that. that is, yeah, there's static right there for just yeah, a few right there seconds. until yeah. they get that lock box open and get that key out yeah. to get you in there. They're just standing there looking around, and and if they see that the front porch is not clean and it looks really cluttered, they already have in their mind before they ever go in on what they think the inside of the house might yep. look like when You're they right. get in. So You're right. you know, if you got that front porch looking spotless, that that goes a long way to helping them as they go in the property. And a lot of people nowadays rarely use their front doors. That's right. You know, it's got to be something special. Either either it's a, a, a UPS delivery or somebody's trying to sell me something. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't even get me started no, we on use, that. Oh we my use gosh. our garage door. It, we do too. Yeah, yeah. Same thing. Op- open and close all the time, just yep. up and down. Because, we, unfortunately, we don't have a walk-through garage door, you know, like a door. Right. So every time we come in out the garage, we have to raise the door Absolutely. every single time. I've gone yep. through two garage door openers since we lived there in 13 years. <laughs> I'm on and my second one now. Are you really? Yep. Yeah, he told me that was not uncommon now these days for that very reason because everybody uses their garage. Yep. And it's open and close and open and close yep. all the time. You just wear them out. So, all right. Well, another thing is uh, depersonalize your space. Now, this one sounds interesting because uh, – and I remember when my dad was in the business, he used to laugh about this, but I don't care where your buyers are from when you're showing them property. If you have a lot of pictures of you and your family around your house, yeah. they will stop looking at the house and start looking at your photographs. Hmm. And for whatever reason, because somebody, especially if it's somebody local, but even the out-of-towners, they just think they're going to see somebody they know yeah. and then realize they know who owns this property. So they'll stop and look at every single picture that you have. I hadn't thought about that. And so it's really important, if you can, if it's possible, to try to depersonalize it by getting rid of a lot of these uh, personal photographs and things like that. And I think I've told this story before, and, and you need to be really good about looking for these because I had a property listed one time, and I think I've told this story. I'll tell it real quick. And I had a realtor open house uh, in the evening, served wine and cheese had the realtors come out and tour this house it was a really nice house and uh, my first set of people that came through kept came back and said we really like those pictures in the bedroom back there and i was like <laughs> okay cool and i was like that's great and then people kept coming back talking about these pictures in the bedroom and i was yeah. like i was like okay what are you guys talking about like what pictures and they said have you not seen the pictures on the wall and i was like no and they said you need to go back there and take a look so i go back there and look and i take a right in the bedroom which is someplace you know i've passed it every time i walk out the door sure. but i didn't look for it And sure enough, the homeowner had boudoir shots of his wife, black and white boudoir shots hanging on the wall of his wife. And I was just like, (laughs) oh, right. Kind of miss those. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be something you really might should think about depersonalizing by taking those down. But so, yeah, it's really important to try to depersonalize it, you know, get rid of those things that will detract (laughs) people from actually looking at the house. Uh, That goes right into... um, uh, declutter the living areas um, that one's really important and you don't think about it much because I, I don't know about you but we live in our house so well, like we my house is not ready to be sold right now at all yeah, but I've got either. two yeah. young kids and a big dog and uh, you know and so there's five of us in about a, almost a 2,000 square foot house so we live in it you know it's, yeah, absolutely. It's, I absolutely. mean there's toys everywhere and you know everything else we try to keep it straight but you know and uh, but a lot of people don't think about that if your kitchen counters are covered with appliances or you know uh, food like apples and fruit basket and you got your bread on the counter everything else you know that cuts down on the space that the people are seeing when they come in same thing with your bathrooms and that's really one of the main ones you know a lot of hair care products and all the beauty products that everybody uses men and women sure uh, if they're all out on the countertops that's taken away from the bathrooms and now all of a sudden they can't see past 
all yeah. the stuff on the counters, all they can think is, well, there's not enough room in this bathroom for me to keep my stuff because yeah. there's not enough room in the bathroom for them to keep their stuff. So that maybe this bathroom is not big enough for what I need. Then you get into the bedrooms. It's the same thing in the bedrooms. If you've got an overabundance of furniture, and I'll raise my hand, guilty as charged on that one because yeah. we moved out of a 2,400 square foot house 13 years ago, moved into this one, and I don't think we really got rid of much while we were in there. <laughs> no. So we just keep moving it around, you know, in the house yeah. individually. Um, but, yeah, if you've got way more furniture than a room needs, you need to kind of get that stuff out, rent a storage building, move it into a storage building until you get it sold, or just sell it. You yeah. know, get rid of get it. Have a garage sale. Put it donate it. Curb. Put it on the curb. Whatever you need to do. And uh, slowly but surely, my dog's helping us to get rid of furniture. <laughs> so she started with the footstool, and it's, it, it's destroyed. And then she went yeah. to the chair. Now it's destroyed. So I figure if we let her out in the house, she'd probably help us out with that a oh, lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. You rearrange the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, the whole house. But <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, so declutter. Think about that. And, uh, and it helps, too. When you hire your realtor, they'll come out, and they'll tell you. If they see something and uh, over number of blankets hanging over chairs and furniture and too many throw pillows, and yeah. just stuff that, that uh, detracts people from looking at the house. I sold this house. I'm not kidding. This was about a 1,200 square foot house. It was vinyl, no garage. So it was, you know, in a subdivision like sure. that. And she worked at an interior design store. I think her mother owned it. And I'll never forget when I walked into that house, she had the absolute prettiest stuff in that house you've ever seen furniture sit around statues vases you name it she had it yep. she had enough furniture in that house and i kid you not probably <laughs> that outfit at least a 2500 square foot house there was literally a walkway everywhere you went and everything was absolutely over the top but it was so much stuff you couldn't even tell how the big the house yeah. was from all the really nice stuff that she had it was just too much of it so it was yep. like a walkway going through it's almost like those hoarder tv shows except for being trash it was just it was, it was stuff. Good, high end stuff high end yeah. stuff yeah, yeah high dollar stuff but her house was covered in it Man. and of course she was trying to buy a bigger house naturally i think so she could put that stuff in the house where it needed <laughs> to go. go buy some more that's right yeah. then she'd end up with more yeah. All right, so we're moving on down the list. So uh, repaint walls to neutral colors. Now, I was always on the fence about this one, and, um, and I'm still on the fence about it a little bit. And I will say that, you know, neutralizing your home does make a, a big difference, right? right. Uh, if you've got bright greens, pinks, purples, blues, whatever, in some of your children's bedrooms, which is where you normally see it, it's always a good idea to try to neutralize it down. I will say right now that uh, gray is a popular interior color. It we is, went through yeah. that beige stage and the tan stage. And right now, gray, or what do they call it, grayish, which is a gray-beige gray beige. mixture. Yeah. Yes. Huh. Uh, that's really a popular color right now. Uh, if you're ever curious to see, just, you know, go out to some open houses sometimes and look around. Uh, I've mentioned before, my wife always liked doing that, seeing what paint colors and sure. schemes and how people decorate. And you can get some great ideas from that. But do try to neutralize if you can. Um, and I understand it's really difficult for a lot of people to want to put a lot of money in their house when they're trying to sell it because the right. whole idea is you're trying to sell it. Right. But I will say, there's never been a time that I can think of in all my years of doing real estate and everybody I've ever talked to that it didn't pay off that they did these things on the front side sure. to get it sold for top dollar and also within a you know the right amount of time right so yeah. that that's well, that, really that's, important that, that's that's the important thing is get it moved yeah that's right you know i heard something the other day i listened to a uh, real estate uh that, that's it's called the real estate flash i listen to it every morning when i come into the office and a statistic that was brought up and i don't know where he got the statistic from but basically what it said was is that uh when you put a house on the market, it's going to get viewed like 75% more than when you have a price change. So when you have a price change, it's, it's not the same thing. So yeah. if you market it high and then you start dropping the price, you actually missed your primary market when you first put it on the market. They're it, not going to give it another shot. They're probably yeah. not going to give or it another shot. Or they've already bought something. Or they've already bought something. Yeah. Right now, yeah. that's going to be the key because yeah. things are selling so quick right now that by the time that you get ready to do a price change – they probably already bought another house. Yep. And that's why the ones that are selling super fast, uh, they're priced exactly right, and they look great, like walk-in ready. People can move right, right into them. And I can tell you from experience, if, if we ever buy another house, I can tell you from experience, I will never buy another house that I can't just – move into yeah you know i don't want to come into it and have to replace have to carpet and repaint and i don't want to do any of that stuff i did that in the house we're in it's 13 years still yeah. working on it <laughs> after 13 years well you know we, we're 15 in hours and we do something to it every year yeah we do too so, mostly upgrades but go back to we were talking about the kitchen and the bathroom the clutter yes. on, the, mm -hmm. on the counters nowadays in in a lot of people are spending a lot of money to go to solid surface countertops mm -hmm. the marbles the granites the the uh uh, Silestone, that, that yeah. sort of stuff like that. 
and it, it just makes makes good common sense. And I, I'm glad you mentioned that. Is don't leave all your junk sitting out there because you want to show off that slab that you paid several thousand yes. dollars for. Then that's why. I mean, that's that's the whole idea. Is you want to you want to be able to show off what you've done, and that's a good point. If you've redone your bathrooms, which your kitchen and your bathroom are the most expensive items to redo in your house. Amen I don't care that. what you do to them. If you're redoing your cab, you know, repainting your cabinets or you know, putting new countertops, it doesn't matter. That they're still going to be the most expensive part of your house because they have most of the stuff in it. And um, that's the progress. Well, that's the progress today that's very nice. on my bathroom renovation. Yeah, Jimmy's showing me a picture of his bathroom here, and that's very nice. Jimmy, what floor is that? What type of floor is that? That is a. Uh, it's a, a, a pebble. Uh, that's river, neat. river pebbles. I like floor. that. Yeah, and I think we're going to like it. I think yeah, that's like really it. good. And you've got up on the wall too. I see his trim yeah, up on the trim. wall. Yeah, the accent, accent trim. Are you there. doing this one yourself? No, no. Okay. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I and and uh, John Allen is a, is oh, a general okay. there contractor you on this one. Tile Warehouse is doing the tile work okay. on that thing. Okay. But I've always told people, and it's it, almost the truth. And John loves the line. But uh, <laughs> the only thing in my toolbox is a Phillips head screwdriver and John Allen's phone number. I've heard you say that on the air before when I was listening to the show because I, I usually about, need him more if I try to use the screwdriver before I call him. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will have to say I'm actually fairly handy. The problem is, is my knees do not allow me to do That's, anything lower than a tabletop yeah, height anymore. Yeah I, yeah. I mean, I can get down there, but I got to crawl crane service. To oh get my up. gosh. You know, it's terrible. I put, the last thing I did in my house was put down a wood floor in my son's room, which was 11 years ago because he's 11 years old now, right, right before he was born. And snap lock, easy to put down. It was a laminate floor, individual pieces. It was great. I did about half the floor, and then I couldn't walk for about a week, I so know. I had to wait. I know. And about three weeks later, I went back in with the help of my brother cutting wood, so I didn't have to get up and get down. I just stayed in the floor. Right. And I had him out in the garage cutting wood and bringing it into me. I finished out the rest of the floor. I don't think I could do that again now. These enough today. Is enough. Enough is enough. I just I don't think I could. Yeah. I want to ask you another, uh, yeah. something about other colors, but first of all, we need to remind everyone this. Yes. This is uh, the uh, the voice of real estate is the presentation of the central west tennessee association of realtors brent is the uh the manager not manager ceo there. ceo there you yes, go yes there you go manager now, what did i do that for? well i kind of do that too well that's, <laughs> yeah, you manage yourself i manage that's, myself manage to get to work on time but their sponsors of the show are are wide and varied and they all have to do with with real estate obviously leaders mortgage services at 36 stonebridge drive 2156678 when you get ready to look at start looking at houses it's a good idea to get out there first see that lender and get pre-approved. Let them go through all the steps that need to go to. Make sure your your debt to to payment ratio is or your your debt to income ratio is what it should be. Make sure you got the down payment from the right sources and all that good stuff. All the folks at Leaders Mortgage Services can tell you that they can tell you they can take you through the maze of all of the types of programs that are available and tailor a mortgage just right for you that you can afford and you can enjoy for the years to come. So go by and see them at Leaders Mortgage Services. Also, you got to ensure that thing once you get in it and uh the folks at uh, Allstate insurance company angie hooten hughes is the local agent here she can not only take care of your homeowner's insurance but she can help you bundle the homeowners the uh, life insurance the automobile insurance save you a little money save you a lot of effort call angie at three nine oh one three seven three six oh six oh and then you know course, i'm gonna Yes. I'm going to try to get her on the air one of these days. Yes. I think she's avoiding me now, so uh, we right. missed her last time. But we are going to get Angie on the air. I, she's, I really want to get her on here, so hopefully yeah. we'll have and, her on Angie, here. he's calling you out. I'm no, calling you, you out you right now, on. Angie. You call me. Come on. This guy we had on before, Pete Dubasson. Yes, we have. And he is with or he owns National Property Inspections, 467-6250. Again, that has become pretty much a part of the process now as far as – is it again I, I get them back buyer side the buyer side, buyer they, side. they will want to have that done but if you're a seller and you're getting ready to sell yes you might want to call pete out there and let him go through it just to make sure everything is like it should be i will be doing before that. you ever market it you that's know, right it, it's not that much money if it's we ever sell our involved. house that's exactly what we're yeah. going to do is give Absolutely. pete a call and have him come out and check it out and then the attorney will get involved, and that should be Bird and Bird. They've been in the legal business since 1985 in Jackson and West Tennessee, specialize in, in real estate uh, do. transactions, residential, commercial, title searches. The good thing is that Charles Bird will review every aspect of that real estate transaction. He's going to personally look at it, make sure that they've got everything right. Could be a verification of titles, covenants, restrictions, land uses, and uh, zoning, all that stuff. He will take care of that personally, 424-7188. Our four great sponsors here for CWTARs, The Voice 
for real estate. That's right. Back Love to you. them all. Thank you, sir. As they say in radio, back to you. Back to you. I'm right here. <laughs> we're right here. <laughs> yeah, we're right here. Here we go. All right. So moving on, we're talking about getting your house ready to uh, go on the air, uh, go on the market, not the air. I'm on the air. To get ready to go on the market for the summer. Best time to be trying to sell your house. So we just got to talk about trying to neutralize your property, uh, maybe get rid of some of those bright off or maybe even older colors. There we go. That's what I was going to ask you about. And you reminded me because I forgot. What's that? And I think we may have talked about this on, a, on another show back when we first started. Uh, my my uh, uh, dining room. Yes, has, red. It has red at the yeah. bottom. Yeah, red <laughs> chair rail and then beige above it. Red yep. is it's a no-no nowadays. Red right? is pretty much out. Yeah. I mean, when you walk yeah. into a house and you see gold. Yeah. Okay, gold. Don't have any gold. gold you see red. Yeah. You see dark brown. And you see some beiges or tans. Yeah. You can pretty much tell. You can pretty much tell when the house was built. That's true. Or the last time somebody updated it. Yeah. When you see those colors in a house right now. Yeah. Those yeah. are not real popular right now. My my dining room, the whole thing was red minus the chair rail and the trim, which was white. Right. And minus we finally three. got rid of that about yeah. three years ago. We had the entire interior of the house done in gray. Yeah. With a white trim. So because yeah. yeah. we had you gold know, walls. That room and the and the uh, ours is an open floor plan type house. And that room and the uh, the living room or den or whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. it's all basically flows into one. Right, I got you. And uh, and the wall colors are the same except for that red trim in there. And the people who we bought it from had matching draperies put in. Okay, know? yeah. So that's that's the main reason we haven't done it. Uh, but it's yeah. cost of the drapes. Well, they're, yeah, because they're already up to, there. We don't have to go do that again. Yeah, drapes uh, are expensive, yes, folks. If are. you've never yes, bought them are. before, yeah, you can go buy something out of the store or whatever. But probably <laughs> what Jimmy's talking about in his house were probably custom made, or they were, and yeah. and that has the tendency to be quite expensive. Yeah. So we've we've painted everything else in the house except those two rooms. There you go. <laughs> hey, you know what? That's perfectly okay because unless you're planning on putting it up for sale anytime soon, you get to enjoy it. It's yours. You you That's enjoy right. it like you like we it. Can right. Look the red. That's right. So we put it there. You put it there. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it makes a big difference. All right. So the other part of that is besides painting, sometimes you don't maybe have to do an entire paint. A lot of times it's just cover up the scuff marks. Yeah. Uh, I know in my case, in my house, probably a repaint would what I need to do with two kids and a dog. But in some houses, if you don't have a lot of young ones running around, you can just cover up the scuff marks, cabinet doors. You know, that's a big spot you don't ever think about is when you're grabbing handles on the cabinet, your fingers are just constantly hitting that, and you'll scuff up those cabinets, especially yep. if they're painted cabinets. And so just try to, you know, cover up those things, back doors, any place where anybody grabs hold of a door facing or whatever over a yep. period of time, you just start wearing that paint down. Yep. And it's a good idea just to maybe just go over those spots that you need to, and you might not have to do a full house repaint. You know, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea in the kitchen to wipe down your cabinet. Just wipe the, the surfaces down because you don't see it, but you're cooking, you're cooking in there and there's a lot of stuff going on in there and those small particles of grease build up on the fronts of those cabinets. They so do. The worst thing you can do is have some a potential buyer grab the handle to open a cabinet and then have to ask you for a paper towel. Uh, that's disgusting. You know? yeah, it, absolutely. <laughs> it happens, but absolutely. you are so right about that. Yeah, around your anywhere around your stove, and I do this frequently because I, I, I cook most of the time in my household, and so I, I'm constantly there. And I'm constantly wiping down the microwave. Yep. The t- and don't forget about the top of the microwave where the yep. vent is. Exactly. Because that's where everything is blowing out. That, that'll get the greasiest more than anything. You know it. And right up under the bottom, you know, check that stuff out and wipe it down frequently. Because the more you wipe it down, the easier it will keep, to keep it stay, to stay clean yeah. uh, rather than the buildup that you end up with. Not to gross anybody out, but we, uh, <laughs> uh, back in, in the early days of my uh, – uh, in fact, I think it was still while I was in the saving and loan business. A, a friend of mine and I did the inspections on the houses we were lending on. Mm-hmm. We did the appraisals ourselves back in those days, which was admissible or permissible. Permissible, yeah. And we went in this one house, and it was not a nice house to begin with, but when we entered the kitchen, it bega- it became even worse. Literally, there was a quarter of an inch of grease on all of the stove, and this house had been vacant for maybe a month. Okay. And there was an open jar of mayonnaise Ew. with a hot dog sticking out of it. <laughs> So I'll oh never forget that scene, and that's been 30 years ago. That scene is still in my head. I said, oh, uh, man. One of these days we just need to do a show <laughs> about stuff that you and I have probably yeah. seen over the years because I can tell you right now from having done foreclosure work when I first got into the business, yep. uh, man, I have, matter of fact, I'm just going to be honest with you, there's at least one house I know of I couldn't even talk about on the air. I yeah. mean, literally oh, yeah. I could not talk yeah. about it on the air. I've had those uh, too, yeah. And, uh, but I've had some that are pretty bad. I remember going into one one time, you're talking about that. It was, uh, it was actually a double-wide mobile home. It's brand new. It was only three years old. 
and uh, sitting on a one acre lot and there was still eggs out on the counter and nobody had been in that house for about three months because they were trying to get the paperwork done on it and uh, we just happened to get lucky that somebody found out there were still dogs in the house or we would have found those dogs in that house after three months because they got locked up in one of the bedrooms three big dogs and they destroyed that bedroom carpet oh, yeah. walls window well they were trying to get out yeah they probably hung wonder they didn't eat each other true i mean stuff all over the floor it was absolutely horrible so yeah that that was one that one yeah. was pretty bad but and you so, talk yeah. you talk about foreclosures though those can be the worst because sometimes when you foreclose and the, and the buyer leaves the house or the owner leaves the house they're not in a real good mood and they'll no they'll, they're not <laughs> they, will, they will trash one big time uh, there was one that i went into again many years ago and uh there was an add-on room in the back, so I, you know, I stepped. I took my two steps down and I went went in there, and I took about four steps and wound literally wound up waist deep in the foundation. Oh wow! They had put a throw rug over a hole, a hole. in the middle of the room. Didn't tell anybody, and I stepped in there. And next thing and I know, you I'm you know I got a I got a cat's eye view of the rest of the room. <laughs> Interestingly enough, yeah. that same thing almost happened to me on a house out by the airport that uh, was covered trees all around it. It was like literally in the woods, and so it had a major mold and mildew problem because they probably could not keep the water out from under the crawl space. Right. And it had a huge fireplace, and I remember walking into the den, and I was a little skeptical as it was anyways, and I stepped on the carpet, and when I did, it dropped down about three inches, and I knew then, so I, I kept walking around I could find solid, and it was probably <laughs> rotted out probably a good five, six feet away from the fireplace, that whole yeah. entire den. The only thing that's keeping you going through was the fact the, well, carpet, the carpet was nailed down around the edge of the right. walls. Yep. And uh, and they ended up bulldozing that house down when it's all over and done. Oh, so, man, yeah. That's, that's gross. All anyway, right. So, anyway, moving back, on. Back to the better stuff. See, this is why we never got to this last time we <laughs> were here. Right. We get off. We, we got get, so many we stories track, to tell. We? All right. So, this one's pretty just easy, but fix any loose handles. And I know that sounds funny, but uh, loose handles. And I'm also going to say check your toilets to make sure that they don't move because, believe it or not, that is something that just happens, especially if you have tile floors. Uh, toilets just get to where they want to just move. And they only made them move an eighth of an inch, but that little That's bit enough. of an eighth of an inch is enough, enough to, to really bother some people. Yep. So it's super easy to fix. You just get a shim, put it up under there, cut it off, break it off, whatever you got to do, just yep. keep that toilet from moving. But fix any loose handles you have. That's cabinet knobs, uh, back door handles, screen doors. Those handles wear out because you're constantly yes. banging oh, yeah. those things all the time. And most of those are plastic And now, they're so. plastic now. That's right. You can just go to a hardware store and buy a new one, bring it home, put it on. I've done that so many times. Yep so easy to do um then uh (laughs) this was pretty funny but really important conduct a smell test okay so (laughs) talking about stories i'm not going to get into any now but that will be the fastest thing that'll turn somebody off you've probably actually seen commercials for like air fresheners and stuff talking about how you get used to stuff but like when somebody walks in let's say to your bedroom all they see is a giant sneaker right you become nose blind that's right you become nose blind you you're you are literally smelling the same thing day after day after day yeah you don't smell anything. It smells normal yeah. to you, but you brought somebody else over to your house yeah. that's never set foot in there before, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, well, what's that smell?" You and I both have dogs, and that you know, people will they will pick up on. They that. will pick up on yeah. that, yeah. Especially if you've got one that's either older, so therefore they can't always make it outside, or you've got one that's just not that well house trained. Yeah. Thank the Lord, this one is very house yeah, trained. Uh, but our last two that we had, that after 17 years, they just we always had trouble with one of them that just. Could yep. not seem to want to go outside. He always yep. want to go in the house, and so yeah, that's that's a huge problem, and especially cats. That's cats are worse than dogs yeah. uh, oh, as far sure. as the odor goes. Yeah. So make sure you take care of that. And I know right. these are all kind of gross things to think about, but, no, but you necessary. really need to do it. And, and if you've got teenage kids or whatever in your house, check their rooms too, because you know uh you never know their rooms have a tendency to have their own little scent <laughs> when you go <laughs> yes, in there they do. we got a couple of minutes left are we going to make it through the list today or we um gonna... you know what uh yeah. the, the most important one right here is clean yes. the house that's, oh, yeah. that's number 10 on the list right yeah. here i was going to go down 11 and 12 are pretty good hide valuables i'm not even going to talk about 12 because i'm on the fence about that one but uh <laughs> clean the house that is important i mean clean it up mop the floors do what you ever got to do and hide your valuables that's really yes. important that and medications yes i've talked about that on the on 
on the show before about prescription medications right now is even more so than the valuables because that's the number one thing that's taken out of open houses and showings and everything else wow. is prescription medications right now. Yeah, the so, other thing I would not have thought of. And and number 12, the one you weren't going to get yes. to, very briefly, consider staging. And you said you're on the fence with that. I'm on the fence with staging because, uh, number one, uh, it does cost you money. So if you're moving out of your house, and only consider it naturally if you're, you know, um, if your house is going to be vacant. Right. Now, the only other time I would call a stager in, a lot of people, like, like me, my living room is our playroom, okay? Yeah. So if I brought a stager into my house, they'd be like, get all this stuff out of here, put it back into the living room. Right. Same thing with a bedroom that you turned into an office or, yeah. you know, whatever. And uh, But if you've got a vacant house, a lot of times staging does help, but it all depends on the buyer that's coming through. Some buyers like to see a vacant house because now then they can picture all their furniture and yeah. how it'll fit. And uh, but then there's also a lot of people out there that can walk into a room and if there's nothing in it, they can't figure can't out how to make it, it work. They yeah. can't vision it. Yeah. So that's where I'm a little bit on the fence. If you've got the money to do it, then I'd say look into it because they have most of your stages have gone to school or some sort of class to learn how True. to do this. And uh, so there is a price tag associated with that for the most part. But uh, in our market area, we tried it a long time ago, probably about 10 years ago. We had a couple of people that got their staging license right. and could not get it off the ground but you go to memphis or nashville like it's a big deal in those areas to stage property so so that's why i was on the fence about it it just really depends and i I think it's starting to grow a little bit here too excellent excellent all right that that's pretty well covered it like the morning dew i think yeah that got it done at least we got through the list anyway so (laughs) that's that's better than we did two weeks ago (laughs) that's true thanks to paul schulze for uh thank you paul Working the controls, we're on Facebook Live on the CWTAR Facebook page. And uh, we'll see you next uh, Monday, about 10, 15 or so, for The Voice for Real Estate with Brent Ward and a presentation of CWTAR sponsored by Leaders Mortgage, Allstate Insurance, Pete Dubasson, National Property Inspections, and Bird and Bird Attorneys. See you next week, Brent. Thanks, Jimmy. I certainly appreciate it. Absolutely.